Welcome back. Quest for you, friends. Lately, I've been thinking about the phrase that we use so often. Means to an end. And when I stumbled across the following quote from Gandhi, I knew I had to make an episode out of this. Here's the quote. If I want to deprive you of your watch, I shall certainly have to fight for it. If I want to buy your watch, I shall have to pay for it. And if I want a gift, I shall have to plead for it. And according to the means I employ, the watch is stolen property, my own property, or donation. Thus, we see three different results from three different means. Will you still say that the means do not matter? According to Wikipedia, in philosophy the term means to an end refers to any action, the means, carried out for the sole purpose of achieving something else, an end. When I think about the means to achieve an end, I cannot help but notice the emphasis on the end and the disregard for the means to get there. How often have we explained and justified unethical, inappropriate, and totally stupid actions with this phrase? We do them only because they get us to the desired outcome. Recall episode 302, where I talked about the importance of the process over the envisioning of the end result. The process is the means. How do we get to our desired end result? Do the ends justify the means? What is acceptable? Sometimes we are so focused on the end that we ignore the means. But today, I want to awaken you to the means. Because the means are our actions. The steps we take to get to the end result. I'm certain nobody listening to this podcast lies and cheats their way to the next level in their life. But there are many other ways we adjust our actions to make the ends happen. Often, we lower our standards to get what we want because we assume we cannot have it without doing so. I think of relationships we try to make work by not being honest with ourselves just so we can say we have a partner and pretend to fit in. At work, we turn away from decisions we don't agree with maybe even unethical ones, just so we don't have to risk our job. Lowering our standards implies that we are modifying the means. Frequently, we also give up our principles to get the desired end. I recall friendships I carried on for years, where I went along with people doing things that I didn't internally agree with. Have you gone out with friends and ate foods you swore you wouldn't eat? Or given up workouts that were more important to you just so you didn't have to go through the painful explanations after you say no? Instead of acting in line with our values, we choose a different path so we can get the end. The friendship, the partner, the fun activities, and the acknowledgement. And then there are all the other behaviors we exhibit on a daily basis that are not in line with who we want to be. We lie to the cop that pulled us over to get out of a ticket. We play dumb with the doctor's office who calls because we missed an appointment. We make up stuff so that someone lets us move to the front of the line. And we yell and threaten people when they screwed up our plans and schedules. We think we achieved the end of our desire. Someone made an exception for us. We talked our way out or into it. We took a shortcut and it worked. But the end is not the end that we really desired. Because we took different actions, the results are different. Recall Gandhi's quote. The watch is the end result in all three scenarios. But the way it was achieved changes its description. The stolen watch, the purchased watch, the donated watch. All three are different based on the action taken to get the watch. When I lower my standards to keep a relationship alive, it never feels good. While I have the relationship, 
I lack happiness and joy. When I give up my principles because I don't have the guts to say no to other people, I feel regretful and frustrated. While I don't miss out on my friends, I feel like I cheated on myself for not doing what matters most to me. When I act beneath my standards and exhibit less graceful behaviors to get what I want, I am often ashamed of myself. How we choose to act changes who we become. Every action defines who we are. So if we are sacrificing the means for the end results, we are in fact sacrificing the end result because it's a different one. This then indicates that the means are really the end. The end is not something independent of the means. The end cannot be achieved with any means without being a different end. How we choose to achieve it is who we choose to be. I can take responsibility for my action by accepting the speeding ticket as a lesson and change my driving behavior going forward. Or I can try to talk my way out of it with lies and self-pity, but never learn a thing. Is it about the speeding ticket or is it about the person I'm striving to become? I can drive past the people on the side of the road that obviously need help and get to my meeting on time. Or I can stop and help out and get to my meeting late. Is it about the meeting or is it about who I want to be? Let's ask ourselves, is it worth changing the means in order to find the best outcome? Is it about the outcome at all or is it the means that matter? Is it worth sacrificing who we are to become someone we don't want to be? Today's actions define our life tomorrow. If we sacrifice who we are today, then who will we be tomorrow? Not our true self, but someone else. Not the person we want to be, but the person we settle for. Not someone who we are proud of, but someone that just made it through. The way we choose to get to the end defines what it's going to be like when we get there. Exhausting, because we rushed through. Lukewarm, because we cheated our way through. Anxious, hoping we don't get caught. Alone, because we upset everyone along the way. Let's be clear, starting now. The means and the end are one and the same. Pick your means carefully and worry less about the end. The more you think through your means, the more you stay true to yourself, your path and your values, the better your outcome. Maybe even better than you can currently imagine. Much love, my friends.